I want you to imagine that you are a primitive person living in a primitive city six, seven thousand, maybe more years ago. Let's say you're a shepherd and you're out with your flock and you can see the city from the hillside. And then all of a sudden, a fiery serpent streaks across the sky and explodes right over your city, evaporating everything. Well, that actually happened at Sodom and Gomorrah, and that's what we're talking about this week. Kindred UMC live show features adults discussing adult topics, occasionally with adult language. It may not be suitable for young viewers. Please use discretion before watching. Hello all, welcome to the Kindred UMC pre-recorded live show, coming to you not live, but pre-recorded from my front room, AKA Kindred Studio. Hey, my name is Chris Hayden. I am the pastor of Kindred UMC. I'm Ryan, and I'll be joining tonight. And I'm Preston, and check all four of your tires for nails. Like Just all the, the time? Sure. <laughs> for, for nails. Yeah. That's how I do it. Clipped nails. Clipped yeah. nails. Yeah. Um, welcome, Ryan. This I believe this is your first time on the live live show or the live show. This is the first time on the live show. You were on our podcast. I was many for, moons ago for the Enneagram mm -hmm. business. Uh, where I dissected that. We I, don't believe in that anymore. We think it's from the demons. Oh, I was oh, going to say it is coming back. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I, the the real the the real brains behind that outfit uh, got hired somewhere else. So, while she is still uh, a part of our team, she is has far less spare time to uh, to mess with the Enneagram. <laughs> the people who have invented Enneagram. No, 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 Courtney. Oh, Courtney, gotcha. who's she? She's just got. She's just busy. At first, and I thought you were low key telling us that the Illuminati have been outsourced. Now, okay. Well, we can. Well, we all know that the <laughs> Illuminati have been outsourced, but oh. I, I have no idea. I didn't get the Daily Bulletin of that. They're yeah. going to dogs now. Uh, no, That's Courtney. Funny. Courtney was the brains behind that. I ah. I couldn't care less about Enneagram really, but it's fun when someone does, and Courtney was the one that did. That's what a Type Three uh, would say. Yeah, that, uh, that's just what your type <laughs> would say. Uh, uh, is your is your Gatorade in Pisces or anything? Or? <laughs> yeah, you get it. You're yeah. onto it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my point exactly. Actually, because of <laughs> because of the alignment of massive rocks. Well, when, when see for my type, when Mars is orbiting around, like, yeah, I don't, I, I don't I'm really just saying, buy. We're it, flesh but. bodies made mostly of water. I think big rocks with gravitational pulls have some kind of effect. Hey, we're going to talk about big that. rocks with gravitational pull. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't mean to be so aggressive. You just gave, you just gave me like finger mustache. Yeah, right I didn't. You're like, smell <laughs> this. Hey, oh. sniff this. <laughs> what do you think? It's like you had barbecue today. Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on a French onion burger. Is that um, what they call it now? It's quite literally well. <laughs> not a euphemism. I'm really working on not it. Not a euphemism. Urban Dictionary says it's quite literally a French onion burger. That's what I'm making for t dinner tonight. Um, we're continuing our march through Genesis, the beginning, I call it, and uh, we're going to be looking at an age-old tale that has gotten much, much in recent history uh, misunderstood, the tale of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, mainly the destruction of those cities, and mainly it's the destruction of Sodom, and then there were surrounding cities. Anyway, we're looking at Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 through, and they sound like this. <laughs> Alexa, shut up! <laughs> the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the in the gateway of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose and uh, he rose to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. He said, "Please, my lords, turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night in and wash your feet." Then you can rise early and go on your way. They said, no, we will spend the night in the square. But he urged them strongly. So they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread and they ate. So two very simple things. Uh, angels have appeared in Sodom. Uh, angels is a, a tricky word. It really means messengers, and uh, and these are also characters that have kind of been established in previous chapters. So these two guys show up in this city, and there's this guy Lot, and Lot we know as the nephew of Abram, who is now Abraham, and so Abram's or, or Lot is kind of the good guy in the story. We already kind of know that, you know, and so these messengers show up, and he's like come inside, come stay with me. And they're like, no, 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 we'll, we'll sleep in the square. And he's like, no, 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 really, come stay with me. 
And we know that because they've already kind of established Sodom as like a, a dangerous place, a city where kind of like things aren't quite right. Was it referred to as that like earlier in the Bible? Sodom. Yeah, it, okay. right, literally the chapter before this. Okay. I, I, because I didn't want to read like seven chapters, yeah. so we're kind of skipping through it a little bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this has kind of been established already. In fact, God has already told Abraham, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this city out because of their wickedness. Gotcha. And, and then Abraham has this kind of interaction, this dialogue scene with God oh. about like, well, what if there's 50 good people? And he's like, all right, if there's 50. And he's like, well, what about, oh, 40. What about 45? Yeah, yeah. What about 40? What? Yeah. And he talks him down to 10. Yeah. And God's like, all right, fine, fair enough. If there's 10, I won't destroy the city. And this is how it's kind of a tale as to like, you know, like a tell as to how confident God is that this city sucks. <laughs> like He's like, no, 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 trust me, we won't find the 10 good people there. <laughs> like, it's a terrible place. So that's kind of the, the, the setup for this whole thing. Uh, okay, so uh, he urged them strongly, uh, but before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man surrounded the house and they called to Lot, where are the men who, ca who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we may know them. Biblical term for, for sexing them. They want to sex oh. them up. They want to know them carnally. Yeah, they want to, they want to know them biblically and carnally. Biblically, that's, yeah. that's the term, and, yes. and also uh, non-consensually. It, it yeah. should be the emphasis here. That's an innuendo. Well, I yeah. Would, I would say that that's, I don't know, I'll, I can, I yeah, can yeah. hold my commentary. Yeah, no, no, go for it. Okay, so I'm thinking that I'm assuming it doesn't mean literally every single person in the entire village, but I well, assume it's a large amount of people. Well, so here's the thing. Uh, I don't think we should read these stories literally. Right, that's and what, we'll, that's what And I'm we'll saying. talk about this a little yeah. bit. But uh, yeah, the, but the storyteller, so think about this more as like an adult bedtime story. Yeah. Not adult like sex, but although sex is in it. Right. But I mean like this is obviously not intended for children. Yeah. Because there's, it gets worse from here, just mm -hmm. fair warning. Um, but yeah, so like the bed, so like it's kind of a bedtime story where you would, yeah. you would exaggerate and say the entire or, yeah. city, or, all the men and like, all the young men. Like and, hyperbole, where it's like yeah. everybody was there. It's like all the king's horses and all the king's men. Yeah. Like that's kind of what the idea is. Like all the king's horses, like Humpty Dumpty is not supposed to be taken literally, guys. <laughs> like, let's Bring not, out Humpty Dumpty yeah. that we might know him. Yeah. Wait a minute. He broke in. Why, am I supposed to believe that this egg man was put back together again? Wait, 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 wait. Like, At what point did someone not, say he was an egg? We all know that Humpty Dumpty is an egg. Mm, does it say ever? In read the, story? Read Rossi, liter the literature again. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so you you are now entering well into the area of uh, theological and biblical scholarly debate. Right with that little thing right there. Does uh, it ever say that it's an egg? And, like, and we're going to talk about specifically the Sodom and sodomy part. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about that because that's coming all right gotcha. so uh so that they may know them lot went out of the door to the men shut the door after him and said i beg of you my brothers do not act so wickedly it should be known that lot is an alien in the city he, he like he's a foreigner who's settled here he, he's not from sodom he's from space he's yeah he's an okay. alien from <laughs> space um but the guy he, the guys he has technically are they're Angels, from, they're messengers. So else, from and they are like they've been basically hanging out with God on Earth, and As, like, and assumedly they are more humanoid form instead of you know the yeah, I mean, spheres of eyes. Well, that's why Lot didn't freak it out. It would be too. understood that they're just like people. Yeah, these are just two dudes basically. But we know dramatic irony. We right. know things that the characters don't know, and it's that they're angels. Mm -hmm. So uh, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Look, I have two daughters who have not yet known a man, known a man, who have not yet known a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do with them as you please. This is just a, just a moral compass for fathers. This is how you're supposed to treat your proper, I mean, daughters. Jeez. This is ironic, don't cancel me, I'm being ironic. Uh, only do nothing to these men for they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they replied, stand back. And they said, let this fellow come here as an alien, or this fellow came here as an alien and he would play the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. 
So we're gonna we're gonna do you twice in the bottom. Like it's like more aggressive. It's like we hate you now, and like we're gonna take what we want. Like because, that's the F yeah because you told me no. Yeah, you, you know, like this. Now here's this foreigner judging us. We're gonna do worse to you. Is basically what they're saying. Uh, then they pressed hard against the man Lot. They came near the door to break it down, but the men inside reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house. So these are the angels. They like rescue him at the last moment. Uh, into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck with blindness the men who were at the door of the house, both small and great, so that they were unable to find the door. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I won't, I don't want to, because we'll be reading this text for the entire night if we go, keep going. But essentially what ends up happening after this is uh, Lot is told by these angels, get out of here. We're going to burn this place to the ground. And Lot leaves. He takes his daughters. He takes Sarah, or not Sarah, that's Abraham's wife. He takes his wife and, uh, and they leave. And then the angels decimate the place. They just absolutely destroy it. And as a, a, like a weird little part of the story, excuse me, weird little part of the story, Lot's wife looks back against the advice of the angels. And when she looks back, she's turned into a pillar of salt, which is weird. So first of all, before I start talking about what I think is going on in this story, what do you think, what do you make of this? Uh, and I, you don't have to have a great theory or anything, but just like, what's your reaction to it? What, how do you make sense of this? I mean, I still am having a reaction to um, Lot just being uh, all, hey, take my <laughs> dollars instead yeah. Yeah. and do with them whatever you will. Because I feel like some people will make the argument that in the grand scheme of things, we should do things for God rather than for people that are service to God should trump anything that we do for people. And, but still, why like, do you, what do you, so I, I hear what you're saying. I, because I know you, I suspect you disagree with that premise. Yeah. Cause I, cause I feel like one, as you kind of referred to treating your daughters like property in that regard Two, they have no say in the matter. Three, it's just horrifying. Cause it's, you know, speaking so, of sexual assault. These are, so, uh, this story was written down in 600 BCE or so. So it's not as old as we think it is. Mm -hmm. This was written fairly historically close to Jesus. And this is some of the stuff that Jesus corrects in the New Testament. When he starts co correlating, if you love God, then you have to love people. Mm -hmm. You can't love God and not love. So this is a lot of what Jesus gets crucified for. Yeah. Is like the, the idea that you just said, mm -hmm. which absolutely permeates our like modern society. We all, no one would find this behavior acceptable anymore. Mm -hmm. And like, thank God for Jesus because like he was one of, and, and many other historical figures, like he's not the only spiritual or political leader to insist that loving God and being human is loving other humans. But his, that thrust is what got him killed. And that is the thing that we like, that's one of the major things we hold on to. That's a, a relatively revolutionary idea, actually. That women are not property, and not only are women not property, but not but aliens and foreigners are not property to be subjugated and raped. And like, like it, it's not just about your tribe, your tribe is everyone. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of the takeaways from this story, you know? So, all right, uh, uh, Preston, you, uh, sorry, I kind of cut you off too. Did you have any more to say? I don't uh, Eventually, yeah. Of, of course we do. We all do, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to tag off of that. I, and I think it ties to the Jesus story almost literally, like directly, literally. It's supposed to. That's why it's a story that we're reading and something written down. But the mob turning on the one person that is trying to get them off someone else's back. And just being the one, the, the lamb, the sheep in the way, like just, okay, fine. I'll just be out here and try to deal with you all. <clears throat> and you know, carnal, carnal regression is very easy to get back to. 
try driving in Orlando. It's very easy to <laughs> switch. Yeah, you drive in Orlando there. and you'll find yourself in a very I'm, rage-filled place. I'm very socially accepting of all people until you cut me off and then I hate yeah. everybody, including my mother. I'll slash your tires. I have no remorse until it's yeah. over. Yeah, because it, it, it's very easy to slip back yeah. into. So we're like, what's the... So that that's a, that's a really important part of this because I think we read stories like this and we go like these horrible people oh jonah took a dump yeah oh gosh jonah he's like yeah can't control his people. butthole yeah <laughs> um dogs much we'll better we'll clean it up in a few minutes <laughs> um but the so uh a lot of people would read the story and be like look at these horrible sodomites like look at these horrible people who are absolutely evil and all they want is to do evil against new people. Mm -hmm. I would never be like that. And like, that's not the point of the story. Like the point of the story is no, everyone's capable of this. Mm -hmm. Like it wouldn't be a story that lasted very long if it wasn't for the, the capacity of human beings, all of us, yeah. to have places where we are tempted, rageful, want to do violence, want to take what we want. Like we are all susceptible to that, you know? Like that, and that's kind of part of why this story yeah. sticks and lands in the zeitgeist. Um, let me, all right, let me get a, just a couple of like historical factual things out of the way. So first of all, uh, there's, uh, there's an article that was recently published within the past 10 years or so about a city uh, called uh, Tall El Hammam, I think. Anyway, it's it's basically a city that was destroyed by an astronomical event. It was a city that that absolutely like a meteor struck, but it didn't land. It exploded in the atmosphere, and it was basically the equivalent of a nuclear explosion, but without the radiation. Um, and people think that that's what this was that there's a, that that's what happened here you know that that's the that's the city of sodom well wait well not without the nuclear radiation like without we, new, yeah if we would create it just a yeah. just a, a the blast of a of a just a several several megaton explosion but just and we actually little... recently had one that happened in russia like recently like 2013 yeah, yeah. 13, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 and they've got video in fact if i remember to do this i'll splice in footage of because i downloaded some of the footage because i was fascinated by this idea and it didn't land in a populated area thankfully but it was close enough that there's lots of footage of it from like dash cams and stuff so like this stuff happens and part of part of the reason we have mythos and part of the reason we have these scriptural stories is to make sense of things like to try and make sense of how life works and what's going on and to attach some kind of a moral lesson some kind of a spiritual insight to things that actually happened yeah so, otherwise we're in a locked room screaming until right. our, until <laughs> our mouths makes bleed. Sense. Yeah, yeah 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 so so my theory on this is that there there almost certainly was uh there were cities of the plains five cities one of them was Sodom, one of them was a, was Gomorrah, and then there were other cities in that area. And there was, an, there was literally a meteorite strike that exploded in the atmosphere and like a, like a nuclear explosion, like kind of vaporized the city, basically. And, and then that story survived and survived and survived. And now you've got a people, the Israelite people, who have a relationship with God and they and they have this story and they're like, well, how does God fit into this? And it's like, well, Sodom and Gomorrah must have been there. They were evil and that and this was judgment, but people survived. So there must be a reason that people survived. Lot and Abraham and Lot's family, they saw this happen, but they were righteous. And then the pillar of salt thing too is like, that's what happens to people in these horrible circumstances when they're caught in the open. Mm -hmm. Like they're literally, like, I mean, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, like it, it's, it's horrific to describe the details, so I won't, but like Pillar of Salt makes sense mm -hmm. in that type of, so like probably what happened is an actual historical thing happened and then later theologians attached important like spiritual 
truth and guidance to this. Now, that doesn't help us with like, what's the point of the story? Mm -hmm. I think the point of this story comes down to the contrast between how the people of Sodom react to strangers and how Lot reacts to strangers. And like, that's what this is really about. And a lot of, a lot of modern history, and when I say modern history, I mean like circa, you know, uh, 15th century modern history has been placed around this idea of sodomy as the sin and specifically gay sex, that's a relatively new idea. Like historically speaking, that's a new idea. And, and if you just read the text, it doesn't make any mention of homosexuality or gay sex. It's about this group of, th this city, this population, this group of people who have organized their city in such a way to take advantage of the person who's vulnerable which is a common theme throughout the Old Testament and the Torah. God hates institutional injustice. God hates it. And God like hates it with a fiery fury. And like that's what's really going on. It's not about sodomy. It's about an, an entire population of people who have committed themselves to taking advantage of other people who are weak and vulnerable and get what you can get while the getting's good. And here we have Lot saying, no, 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 don't do that. I'll do, I'll give you everything. I'll give you my most precious to not do that. And they're like, no, mm -hmm. that's what's really going on in this story. And that's why, that's the, the heinous sin that God hates in this story. It has nothing to do with homosexuality or butt sex or anything. Like it's, it's all about this, like taking advantage, the systemic injustice. So that's the big question that I've got. Like, what do we as Christians who, who are doing our best to try and follow Jesus' lead, to try and follow where God leads? That we think. <laughs> the best we think. The best we, the best we can best figure. We can imagine. Yeah. Uh, like, what do we do in the face of, and have you ever encountered, like, injustice, and especially systemic, inj like, what, how do we, how ought we be in the face of that? I, it's a hard question to answer, because you can obviously say, I'm going to get into politics, and I'm going to stop it myself. Yeah, right. And that's already a selfish notion because you think work. money's not going to talk somewhere up that line, which it does to virtually 110% of the people that get in, no matter how nice and good you think they are. So, um, by the way, we've gone over time, and I don't oh. care because I, I like the conversation. I want to, like, I want to hear what you guys think. It was about a long that. story. Yeah. Um, and it could have gone longer. Yeah. Too. So, like, uh, get over it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So the only thing you can do is what like an old timey quote is just tend to your garden so if you've if you've got things that relate to this story that you can obviously point out like oh man i always get mad at these people for doing this there's probably something buried there that needs to be dug up weeds pulled and then turn to your neighbor's garden and sit and you can only work one at a time Five, five or six people in a row is too much for you and then you're going to get overdrawn and i bubble think that bubble. actually is pairs well with the actual, because that is kind of the, the advice of this particular story too. It's like, take care of who comes under your roof mm -hmm. or in your, like take care of the people who come into your into your influence circle. Yeah. Well, we're you know? seeing it with, um, I won't say it's like I can't. I'm not gonna solve systemic racism. Yeah. But when, when someone I care about says something that's offbeat, I can have a conversation with them. Like I can do that. That's like they're in my influence and I can mm -hmm. engage in that way, you know? And then like you can expand that to lots and lots and lots of other things. Now I think we go a little wild with it where we cut people off and we like, you're dead to me because yeah. you said this thing. And like, well, it's building the flock. Yeah, like that's not, and that's not helpful. Like, no, 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 engage, be, be gracious, be mm -hmm. kind. Like, and that's kind of who Lot is in this. Lot's willing to sacrifice everything. Now, definitely problematic example, his daughters. Mm -hmm. Like that's... Whoa, yeah, that, but translated to modern some, times. Yeah, that's yeah. some cultural, like, it, that story is thousands and thousands of years old. Translated like, to modern times, it's, hey, take my car, take my money, take my table, yeah. take whatever you feel is but like, necessary, but... Yeah. Right so, now, we're not, we're not saying that. A gracious yeah. response to the people in your influence I think is is one of the takeaways. Uh, Ryan, have you any thoughts? 
Uh, just pertaining to the sense of injustice in general, or? Well, I mean. Um, I say yes. <laughs> yeah, I I Because think... I like hearing everyone's opinion on this, because a lot of, some people, there's a few, 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 few people who have huge Twitter accounts that go, we can solve all of it. I yeah. put eight words on Twitter and I can solve this problem. And then yeah. they back off. And that's and idealistic let, and it's not right, realistic. Right, right. And, and that's crazy. So but, I want to catch one. And then but, if we have you. But it's also ridiculous to create a theology and, and like believe in a theology that doesn't call us to address injustice when we see it, mm -hmm. especially systemic injustice. Well, like It also taps the other side of proving justice by announcing it to everyone. The reason Sodom was bad was because of sodomy. Everybody listened to me, yeah. and here's my preach. And anybody well, yeah. that doesn't agree is out. The self-righteousness is certainly yeah, not, yeah. It's yeah. like the other side of the problem, you know? There, and there's always two sides. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to say, kind of like what you talked about with tending your own garden. Um, I remember reading something once about how, as we are human, we only have the capacity to really get involved in like one, maybe two causes. I, ever. Just just because just because we want to save the whales and you know get rid of uh, racism and you know this was going to be bees. my thing. I like my thing is you can only care about seven things. It's not to say that the other things are not valuable, yeah, right. but you can really only you yeah because like we we celebrate things or we create monthly celebrations to raise awareness for things like breast cancer awareness month but then other things have their own month too like heart disease month or week or whatever the case may be but you can't always care about everything like you can try and you'll spend yourself very quickly and then what what good remains yeah no we have a husk there's a husk left yeah and and that, that husk gets yelled at for not being and, there all the time or yeah and that will need to be tended to <clears throat> and i think with um those who also give to everything i think that speaks more of like an internal problem mm. as well well you i you can't give to everything right like you just can't you'll exhaust yourself you'll starve yourself like it's too much yeah. of a problem i would argue it's an it's in some way an effort to try to be god yeah yeah yeah, right. So, so to me, so I, I'm grateful you guys are here, and I'm and this must be a God thing because we're all kind of on the same track. I'm glad you're here. Oh, thank you. Because otherwise, if I walked in the house and it was empty, I'd it would be weird. Yeah. yeah, we got securities and stuff too, so it would be like we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> um, so you can only care about so many things. A lot of people, some people will feel overwhelmed like I, I can't I'll never be able to do enough mm -hmm. to those people I want to say find the things that really matter to you and trust that God created you that way on purpose mm -hmm. God like if you're if you're like an animal lover it's so easy to make the argument like what are you doing saving the animals we got people dying of hunger and cancer mm -hmm. it's like well yeah but that's how God made you so let's trust Let's put the fate of the world in God's hands and let's trust that God made you for this and lean into it and do that thing. Um, and then you can extend that to so many other things. Yeah. Uh, like one of my big, big things is, I, I, I've, I've been a giver to Compassion International for like childhood hunger is so senseless and doesn't make any sense to me at all given the resources we have. It's like, yeah. like, let's just, can we it's like, just. It's like we have enough. Yeah, can we just do, and, it, and of course it's more complicated than that. Of course, like, so, that, but that's one of my things. Like, like that's yeah. one of the things I care about. Yeah. You ask me about global warming, and I'll be like, hey man, I, I, I'm with you. That sounds bad, and I'm worried, but I'm not, it's not one of my things. It's not yeah. like, and so like, I'm focusing on the things that I care about. Mm -hmm. Like I'm focusing on who God made me to be and trusting that God will do the rest with the rest of creation. And I think that's really what's going on here. I think that's the way to like be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So, all right, we've gone way over. I do want to say um, we had a, a, a dear friend of ours die as a result of breast cancer spreading and um, 
everything that we are collecting financially right now is going to support uh, ministries and not-for-profits that uh, the family of that woman, she, she was young, she was way too young uh, to have died so, so soon. Um, but everything that we're collecting in the recent weeks will go directly to the families picked out charities in honor of uh, Rachel. So uh, you'll see a, um, a QR code that links to our PayPal. It's tax deductible. We are a not-for-profit church organization, so you can donate. And all of that money will go towards uh, cancer research and cancer treatment. Uh, so with that being said, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.